Millie would rather wonder things about this place of employment than still occurred outside of it. At least Millie heard claims so, like people stopping in their tracks upon forgetting where they were headed. Unless they had left half their consciousness with their car. And so said place must not have coalesced into the fabric of the universe unless until the willpower summoned its, its existence. Cars were just a theory. Like a soul into a body, so is a person into a car. At least, so the heiress said too. Doorways otherwise leading to black holes. Like stairways to nowhere, to dead ends. Did guests not envision the right room as housekeeping would wish for an Everest of tips? as children would wish for an entire bed of chocolate. No one ever seemed to claim that they just came from said room. It would complicate a room in payroll. Not to mention, the room shifted not only amongst one another, but floors. Every other day there were different numbers of rooms in different elevators, so you just pressed one and hoped it was one from your head. As far as Millie didn't care, there might have been more than humans checking in, they found a similarly discreet way of check, to check out, like, or with help from pet shops, or luck. Her hand and eye coordination happened upon the tabloid sun times underneath a remote when folding a black dragon cow before taking a silver platter of eaten scrambled eggs, bacon, toast, and fruit. Quote, be there or be square, coined by the shape of the ordinary interior doorway design. Unquote. Well, stand there long enough and you might become square to fit it. No thought. Underneath was, man sews buttons on his underpants because he said so too much. Hangs them on a clothesline before thunder showers. Unscrews his body parts too and hangs them so he doesn't have to take a shower. At least not of his own. She thought. Such headlines reached the head of such a black and white square of the tabloid sometimes because it was deemed as if a hook shot out. The pages might risk being black and white and red all over. The news was as mercurial as Millie's gender of the man in the mirror, who grew breasts and sometimes wore a dress she may have misplaced just before. The glass of the mirror and the voice of the person in her head and even the spelling of Millie's name. Mill Wise name. Worse mercurial as her feet being on forward when she woke up in one place that never really changed. Her hotel door room. Fort Knox. Such were the constantly evolving times, yet how considerate and accepting the hotel was to leave Millie's belongings where she placed them. Even if the newspaper changed the shape to an oval to unravel. Even the doorway was kind of turning before he even got there. Even when she had to be a light sleeper upon being woken by the sound of the closet of the building itself snoring at night and feeling breathing in and out. Like a black and white old time Betty Boop or Mickey Mouse cartoon. Much more intimate, intimate, innocent than the mischievous bell clerk clerk's bell, desk bell, scurrying off, lest to be smacked with an unsanitary palm, 
who said they weren't germaphobes. The clerk had backups who often behave or liked the interaction or to, rang to think. They thought it tickled. Millie needed to get out of her own room, stayed so preoccupied that she couldn't always even recall what was a dream and what wasn't. What did it matter? Coincidences didn't always help. But sometimes sticking to her, sticking to her face for, for the cue of the amusing timing. Hitting her like a cue hitting a billiard ball. Did it fall where it meant to? Just had to aim. The other day, Millie would have searched from lows to highs to find her robin's egg blue and warmer yellow, melty color favorite feather duster, but remember for certain that you also didn't hear birds next to the seashore balcony that weren't gulls. Sometimes she did. Millie chose to keep in mind it was probably a painless dream that upon sleeping after misplacing it, Millie gave birth to a goldfinch and a kingfisher through her nose and woke up concerned. After one of them suggested finding an armoire in the hotel basement behind the subterranean kitchen. Upon sleeping back into wakefulness, Millie realized that this must be where someone stuck her feather duster instead of a lost and found. They got lost. Maybe it ran off with the dish and the spoon and the hotel desk bell. Or it became a monk, uh, the lost and found became a monk to find itself through avatars. Not still half asleep, Millie heard woodland birds chirping. Okay, not on cue out here. And pull back the curtain's clammy touch, and not only to find no clams, nor seed sand, sand dowers leaving a tip, nor birds from a supposed dream, but the navy blue froth waving. Millie sighed and waited for the day's proper break standard to head down, ostentationally or not, to the hotel basement to be in and or out of subconscious or hopefully not somebody else's. If only for a hunch to be correct about history repeating itself, even if a wild St. Gray, to find a work tool and proceed not empty-handed. That is if you got there with hands. The elevator thus rising with their spirit after... Her red hair itself, even her pubic hair, down to the root, all almost tingling and twinging and chuckling at the victorious notion of what this untamed workplace beheld for adventure. Bestow upon unworthy eye next. Her heart could bellow like a bull singing opera some particularly powerful days. Felt like a princess disguises a knight, disguises a princess. All of this Millie thought about on her slower than her own tenacity elevator ding showcase. She couldn't always make a song out of it. Each one was like a light bulb, not in the form of a number about her future. Some, some were numbers, some weren't. If the feather duster slowed her down. With every passing thought, the elevator seemed roomier. Ding. Not ding. Millie hadn't had time to finish this thought when the door slid open from behind her and someone asked, Ni hao ma? More floors than yesterday? A Chinaman peered his head and asked through into a lion's cage to survey the width of the elevator long enough that Millie expected to witness a clean decapitation. She peered up. There were more numbers across the top. Um, yes, sir. 
Millie squeaked. The man grinned up to his eyes and eagerly stepped inside and didn't gesture or press the button for her to do. As though riding for the fun of it, down to the basement and back to the top. Like an escalator rather than an elevator. Or maybe somebody will mistake him for a worker. How many could be said for that? Only amount of time until you blend it in. Better to be ingredient first. He stood to Millie's right and she gave a salutational friendly wink, but upon second look, the man had a worn bandage on the back of his head, but bothered not to ask directly. The numbers dinged and donged and he was no conversationalist and instigator. Not even insta croc, or he'd be out in a preternatural swamp chewing on a sucker meat. The basement's cool, dense air welcomed the door opening in front this time. Like a fresh morning like today. Amelia had only the guts to know that he knew enough English to, when she bit her adieu. I hope you got that catarized, pal. And hopped out before he might have answered. Millie thought he nodded if that counted as yes in China or two, or he was abiding my culture when... Even I don't recall what country the St. Grey Hotel beheld its bearings in. If it didn't move now and then, you could get so preoccupied to notice. Millie was sure that the same thought reached out and massaged and assuaged both of their minds let alone taking the spare time to surf the waves between their brains. That not only were there more floors indeed than yesterday, she could have said at least the elevators were there at all again. And when they weren't again, at least the staircase never led to nowhere. Well, that one. But now here. Nearly her bellboy gossiped that all of the revolving doors led back to the outside, yet never into a jar because phys physics never came without Y or C. And it had the reasons for an understanding. So, not everything evolved like flamingo feet into flapping, web duck feet underwater and in different temperatures of lakes, big deal. The unmistakable armoire was right where Amelia expected in last check, unmistakably overlooking a white cabinet Though she feared if she opened that, it'd be a bummer to get slurped into a black, or in this quote-unquote case, white, hole, when looking for something else. The last thing she wanted to do is get spaghettified. Wasn't that close to the kitchen. Millie slid open the lower drawer and sought after armoire and laid out like a vest, especially for her, was the one-size-fits-all red sweater. Slowly slipping it half on, she waited for time to quicken, but there was no life here. Until sure enough, Millie found herself gleefully transported to a vacant bathroom where she couldn't remember even laying out the new soaps in the dish. This was about to make her job a cinch. Someone kept moving her chair. Millie surveyed behind her in the mirror, the wooden shutters housing the washer and dryer when an earthy, dirt-caked claw swung around the corner for something to grasp, shooting...